Hey, so this is going to be another subaligner demo, specifically the new crossover align feature. And then in the video after this, I'll do a longer one where I go over where I think I'll go through my entire workflow that I'm envisioning for this feature. Um, but I've done a couple of other shorter videos in the past where I just kind of introduced the feature. And in this one, I wanted to give a little bit more context and what I think is the primary use case for this feature. So you can decide if you think it might be helpful for you. So what I noticed, um, tuning a lot of sound systems that are very similar to this is that whenever I would be working on the main and sub, I would pretty much need the same microphone positions. So let's say that I'm going to do about eight to 10 microphone positions through the audience. And, you know, I'll probably start here and then kind of go this way and kind of work back and forth across the audience like that. And I need those same, I might come back and do those same positions for the subwoofer. Or if I think of it at the time and I have control, then when I'm in this position here, then I can measure both the main and the sub as long as I can switch the outputs. And then I go to this position and I can measure both the main and the sub in this position. And then I can use those measurements to do my EQ. But then I realized that if I have both main and sub already at the same position, then I can also do my alignment. And since I'm using audio analyzers like REW and Crosslight that have um, a lot of these filter technologies, filter simulation technologies built in, um, actually, I don't know, there's still filters. I'm just saying filter simulation because I'm not actually using them as an output processor. So I guess it's more correct to say uh, output processor simulation technology. So since I'm using those, then, and that's how I'm doing my EQ, I already have some confidence of what the result is going to be. So I typically don't go back and measure again. But when I do have time or some ways that I've done it in the past is I take all those measurements, then do the EQ, then go back and measure again and do the crossover alignment. And there could be even more steps after that. What I realized though, is that I, I do this so many times in the same way that this is something I could probably get a computer to help me with. So after I've taken all of these measurements, I might get something that looked like this, right? So now I have a bunch of measurements of my main, I have a bunch of measurements through uh, for my sub, maybe I've even split them apart into different zones. And so now I might just look at these against a target. I might also look at an average and start e uh, inserting EQ filters on these systems. And then I could look at the result of that and do my alignment. But that raises some questions about how the averages are made. Um, should I be looking at averages of each measurement or should I be looking at independent measurements of main and sub against each other? So I don't know, it raises a lot of these questions for me and I feel like if I wanna be really responsible, I'll actually look at multiple versions of that. I won't just look at uh, one average done one way, I'll look at an average done another way. Then there's the whole question of smoothing and noise reduction, and there's all these questions that come up. And so I wanted to sort of codify that in a way. And so I developed this feature in Subaligner where I can just drop in the measurements and upload them, and then it will do all the calculations for me that I would normally do manually. Even some of them that I, I might never use, but now they're here available to me. So you can see that I have dropped in those 16 measurements. It's identified the eight locations that I used for main and sub. And then here it's run all of the alignment calculations for me. And so here it came up with a solution, plus it'll always have three alternates here. 
for the first, what if I based this entire alignment only on this measurement location, then I might want to use a delay value of 12 milliseconds. So it goes through all of the locations, and then the one that I will most likely use most often, which is the average between all of them, turns out to be zero. And this actually makes a lot more sense to me because I did my alignment ahead of time using subaligner. So here in subaligner, let me see if I can make this bigger. So here in subaligner, I already had these speakers in there. I measured them ahead of time. I added them to the app. And then I put in the distances and I got the result. And this was what I used in the output processor. Um, and so because I've already done the alignment with subaligner, I'm expecting it to be zero. And this I think is a better way to use the audio analyzer, to use it as a verification tool. However you do your alignment, use it as a verification tool and less as sort of a research and discovery tool. Okay, so I'm expecting it to be zero. And so this makes a lot of sense to me, great zero milliseconds and uh, normal polarity. Sorry, I didn't make this bigger earlier. Here, I can make this bigger. Now it's easier to see. So here we go. Average position, which also has alternates, by the way. Average is zero, normal, 100. And then I can download this and move forward with my life, basically. <laughs> so, uh, so here we can see that aligned average of main and sub, it's kind of hard to see, but it's this black guy behind all of these. But then I could go ahead and import that back into my audio analyzer, and that's what you see in red here, and start EQing that combined response now against the target. Um, and this is in the context, this is in the context of a full alignment where you would do aim placement, EQ, and crossover alignment for every solo element, then your subsystems, then the entire system combined, slowly building up pieces. This just helps me with that step where I need to align main and sub, uh, get the combined response, and then EQ. Basically, this would be like my final EQ step. I, there might even be one more step beyond this where I turn on the entire system together. Um, but this is a big, uh, often final step where I am turning on main and sub together, taking a measurement, and then seeing if there's any final combined system EQ that I want to do. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this video. I've done a couple of others where I kind of walk through more how to use it. Um, so I'll link to those below this video but I wanted to give a little bit more introduction of how I would actually use this in the field where I've taken those measurements, uh, imported them into Subaligner. Uh, this is still Subaligner, by the way, even though you don't see any of the menus here. So over here in Subaligner to get to that page, you just click on measurements. That'll take you here you can do your uploads. So this is part of my larger idea to make Subaligner um, more of a complete alignment solution where it will not only give you the alignment solution based on distance, but it'll also give you, it'll also help you then verify that this alignment solution actually worked out correctly by analyzing the measurements that you take in the field. Okay, so let me know what questions come up for you. Um, or if you've tried this and you have any feedback for me and let me know if I made any mistakes here. Maybe I said some numbers incorrectly and I need to correct them. All right. Thanks a lot.